Wikidata is a sister project to Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia, it tries to share the knowledge of humanity freely in a way that people of different languages and different places and purposes can use and reuse. Wikidata is different in it's a database. It doesn't give you uh, a narrative text, a story of a person or place or, or a technology. Um, it represents relationships. So an astrolabe is a kind of scientific instrument. A particular astrolabe was made by Jean Fusorist. Jean Fusorist worked in France. All of those are simple properties. And when you have billions and billions of those properties, uh, you can that they form a kind of web. You can query that web in lots of different ways to get out interesting knowledge. You might want to... Um, scientific instruments that were made in a particular place or in a particular time or made by people who were authors who wrote about them. Um, it enables you to, to ask questions in a more precise way than you can do with search engines or searching an encyclopedia. So obviously databases exist. Um, a museum will have a database of the things in its collection. There will be biographical databases, people uh, writing biographies of scientists and inventors. Uh, there are um, geographical databases, so classifying points on the Earth's surface and what, what settlements are there, what has been done there. Uh, there's bibliographic data, data about publications. And so far, these different kinds of data exist in different places. So if I'm interested in scientific instruments, well, first, I they won't all be in one museum. They're in lots of different museums and collections uh, and archives. So to find them all, to find a particular kind of scientific instrument, I'd have to go through the different catalogues and they've probably got different search engines or different ways to browse and find that information. But even then, I'm finding catalogue information. What about biographical information about the people who made the instruments? Um, what about geographical information about the cities over time where, where people have made or used scientific instruments? Uh, that would be in a different, different database, maybe in a different building maintained by different people. The, the database for a museum collection doesn't necessarily have biographies of the inventors, and it doesn't necessarily have a map where you can pinpoint the, the places where these things have come from. So the appeal of Wikidata is it can take all these different kinds of data, all these different kinds of relationships, but, and they can be about real things or fictional things. They can be objects or people or artworks. They can be abstract entities like a literary work. Um, and we can relate all these things together. So um, a scientific instrument, an, an astrolabe, a kind of scientific instrument, we can say is made by a particular Steve, Steve Goodwin, who was uh, an inventor, and he wrote a book. And the book is about astrolabes. We can uh, express those relationships and make them available to different websites, different apps, make them available to things that maybe will exist in the future that haven't been invented yet. I don't know in the future how we will query about collections, about di discoveries, about art. Will it be the search engines or, the, or conventional web pages like we have now? Um, maybe it'll be something completely different. Maybe it'll be chatbots. Maybe it'll be virtual reality interfaces. What we can do now is express those relationships and um, say where the knowledge comes from, why it counts as knowledge. So uh, the knowledge about a particular instrument in the Museum of the History of Science uh, it counts as knowledge because that's been catalogued by professional catalogers and the catalog record is online in a particular place. So we have this great opportunity to join up information which now is maybe in a hundred different places and would take months to find if you're systematically trying to find it. 
uh, and to join up different collections. So it makes no sense that if you're interested in scientific instruments collected in Oxford, you go to one kind of interface and one kind of technology. But if you're interested in scientific instruments in Florence, then you go to a different website and different technology. Ideally, it would all join up. And uh, so I've done a few projects at the intersection of art and science and biography uh, and so on during my placement at the University of Oxford and continuing with my, my current placement, which is with the Halili collections. Uh, so one project is focused on astrolabes, these uh, th these calculating uh, devices that, that flourished in the, the golden age of Islam. Um, and there are maybe four or 5,000 of these known to scholars, many in museum collections, some in private collections, some in private ownership, not all equally well documented. Um, so you could do a survey of them. You could find images and catalog details about them. If you're prepared to spend months going to hundreds of different places, uh, you'd consult books and websites and and so on and maybe information isn't public because it's a private collection um that would be a huge amount of effort and we want to cut down the the time needed for data collection and enable research projects that just get more quickly to the analysis and conclusions so um so getting where are the astrolabes what languages uh, do they have inscriptions in? What times were they made? Um, that should be easier to get. That's So that's an ongoing project. I had um, a few museums share data about their all of their astrolabes. The, the History of Science Museum in Oxford has, I think, the biggest collection in the world of these, and they gave me their data. I put down to Wikidata, also from the Science Museum in London, also from the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. And uh, there are different astrolabes. My present uh, employer, the Khalili Collections, has a particularly huge monumental uh, astrolabe that was commissioned for the, the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. Uh, so we can put this together and make a graph of, say, the the diameter of astrolabes over time and was there a trend so it actually those greater variety at, over time and people made bigger and smaller astrolabes as, as time went on and we could focus on uh, the inscriptions in a particular language or uh, if, when they're made by a new, known inventor what can we find out about the inventor maybe there's art depicting them maybe there's there's works that they've written maybe that their correspondence maybe they they sent letters to other intellectuals um so those things are in different places the artwork depicting an inventor the the instruments he's made his correspondence different people maybe different universities different countries are working on describing those uh, and but we can join it up um, another issue was botanical illustrations so from um uh, botanical expeditions where a painter had uh discovered a new species and created a, a painting of that species uh it would be nice to get um all of the the paintings of a particular genus of using tree of life information so that isn't in an art database. Tree of life information exists in in species database in things like the Encyclopedia of Life. But in Wikidata, those things combine. So I could describe the artworks, the paintings, and uh, connect that to the tree of life that exists in Wikidata from other sources, and then ask for a gallery of plants in the asparagus genus and it will know which species are in that genus and it'll know which artworks depict plants of those species so both wikipedia and wikidata work on the principle that anyone can make a change uh, unless somebody's vandalizing unless somebody's being disruptive they're definitely not there to improve it those people can be blocked or banned um, if you're if you're taking part in good faith uh, you can go in and make changes. And you would think this would 
affect the reliability. I mean, it means you can't treat any of these things as a totally reliable source. You need to check. But both Wikipedia and Wikidata hold sources. So you say this is a relationship between things and this is the source, this is a link or this is a citation to a page in a book or a citation to a, a published journal um, that will say why this is knowledge and this enables it to be checked. So you shouldn't trust just whatever people on the internet say, but the reason Wikipedia and Wikidata can claim to be sharing knowledge is that it's it's cited or insofar as it is cited to a relevant, reputable publication. Now, sometimes we don't have the publication. Sometimes that statement is in Wikidata without any kind of reference, and then you shouldn't really trust it. It might be a hoax. It might be a rumor. Uh, so as well as putting the data in, one thing we contributors are doing are putting in, making the links. But this is an advantage that Wikidata is a bibliographic database describing many scientific publications, many millions of papers, as well as being a database about people and places and inventions and scientific measurements and scientific discoveries and stars and planets and so on. So you can say this fact is known about this astrolabe that where and when it was made, but this can be cited to this paper. And then you can potentially filter for, well, tell me things about this topic but only if they're cited to peer-reviewed journals, or if, only if they're cited to things published by Oxford University Press. Uh, we can make those kind of links. And it's amazing how little there's actual vandalism when we're talking about academic topics. Because the vandals, they want to, they want to vandalize something that, that many millions of people will read. So they'll go and put in something about a celebrity. And um, that'll be seen by lots of people. They don't want to change the catalog number of a particular scientific instrument that's in a museum in Oxford. That's not entertaining for them. So that kind of vandalism doesn't happen. And we can monitor it. This is the important thing. If you're, if you're a user on Wikipedia or Wikidata, you can monitor a range of topics and, and you see a chart of recent changes to those topics by whoever has, has made them. And you can see if, if somebody's trying to vandalize, you can see, or somebody's stripping away valuable information or stripping away references, that's visible, that's publicly visible information. So that's visible to the people who check in. Um, there are a couple of major scientific databases, the, the Protein Families database, and I think GeneWiki uh, database, um, or the RNA family database, they actually use Wikipedia and Wikidata as their platform. And yes, that means anyone can edit. Uh, so the the geneticists who use these databases can, can improve them, but the members of the public can improve them. And they found that it doesn't really get vandalized. People don't, the vandals don't want to vandalize the, the protein family identifier of a particular protein. That's not interesting to them. But there are members of the public or you know, just people with education and books who are out there. Maybe they're not in academia, but they, they maybe have studied the subject to a high level and they're in a different career. But they still want to write about proteins or genes or RNA. And so they do contribute. And the, the, the genetic scientists maintaining these databases can monitor changes. Like I said, they can monitor a topic to see what changes are being made and reverse changes that are, that are unhelpful. Se você gostou desse vídeo, dê um like, compartilhe. Aproveite para assinar o canal e ative as notificações.